Good evening, everyone. It is Thursday, November the 7th, 2019. It is currently 6.52 p.m. Central Time. Well, earlier today, I saw a news broadcast uh, talking about a Christian comedian. Um, I also read some news articles about this Christian comedian, and after seeing the broadcast, re reading the articles, I started reading some comments under different articles about this Christian comedian and about the scandal he is currently involved in. And as I read the comments, I just started thinking, man... Well, Christians, the way Christians think sometimes, it, it, it bothers me greatly, all right? So let me just give you the basic thing of what happened. I'm going to just talk about one comment. We're going to look at a Bible verse, and then I can't make this super long, so I'll just get right to the point, and uh, we'll probably come back and talk about this some more. Now, what I'm going to say is going to be controversial, but it's going to be controversial to Christians, Non-Christians will probably go, well, you know, yeah, he has a point. Christians are going to act like I'm denying the Bible or I'm an unbeliever or I'm a liberal. Uh, but I want us to just really think about sometimes the words we say versus the reality we experience. All right, because you know, all right, you'll see what I'm saying. All right, so let's get to the controversy. Let's get to this Christian comedian. Let's talk about what happened. Comedian John Christ. C-R-I-S-T, comedian John Christ. I cannot say that I am super familiar with this comedian. I may even be uh, pronouncing his name incorrectly. I'm aware of that. I am not super familiar with him, but comedian John Christ cancels tour dates and admits to addiction struggles after five women accuse him of sexual misconduct. Now, I have seen in a number of websites that he basically um, it refers to himself or is known as a Christian comedian, right? a Christian comedian. And he uses his platform and I guess his comedy to somehow, you know, maybe present uh, Christianity, maybe present the gospel. I, I can't say for sure because I haven't watched, I don't think I've ever seen a video of his. I've never watched anything in regards to him. But a lot of Christian websites are definitely speaking of him, and I've seen him labeled as a Christian comedian. So we have a Christian comedian. He cancels tour dates, and he admits to addiction struggles after five women accuse him of sexual misconduct. All right. Now, let's just say a couple of things about this briefly. Obviously, he, let's say he professes to be a Christian. Okay, he professes to be a, a, a Christian. He professes to be a brother in the Lord, all right? Now, the first thing we should do is be saddened by the fact that anyone finds them involved in some kind of public scandal, public sin. One, obviously it hurts the name of Christ. It hurts the perception of Christianity. That's always a bad thing. Now, I'm not putting these in order, okay? Because obviously that's not the first thing we should be concerned with. The first thing we should be concerned with, if we were going in, you know, actual order, is that here's a human being who has fallen way short of what he professes to believe, uh, he has fallen way short of a lot of things, probably have hurt all kinds of people. Um, he has damaged his his career, his testimony, and then I guess we and, and of course, if the accusations are correct, in fact, let me go back to the article. Um, it says it says uh, misconduct. I don't know. I'm looking here because I want to be fair here. Well, okay, wait a minute. Uh, he has been accused of harassment. All right. If he's been accused of harassment, any kind of misdeeds, the first thing we should be concerned with, obviously, are, is anyone who was hurt. Okay. So if these were not consensual relationships and a woman was harassed uh, in any way, shape, or form, hurt, uh, you know, any kind of sexual assault, abuse, that's, that should be our number one priority is that's horrible for the victims. That's the first thing we should be concerned with is the victims. And man, you know, what, what, I mean, you can't just say, I'm sorry, because I mean, that's, that's devastating. And, and, and that's, you know, obviously horrible. Then obviously you have a human being, 
you know, if he's guilty of harassing, abusing, hurting, then obviously there are legal consequences and he should face those legal consequences and there shouldn't be a cover-up to protect him because he's a Christian or, or anything like that. If he violated, a, you know, it's hurt uh, as a crime and there's legal ramifications, then legal ramifications have to be taken. I mean, that's, that's the way legal ramifications work. Now, so that's important. But at the same time, he's a Christian. He professes to be a Christian. So we should have some compassion and feel horrible for the person. And we should want, listen, and seek restoration to restore him. Now, he still has to be confronted. Still has to be held accountable. I'm not, not denying that. But we should want not just to go, oh, and this, everyone hops on social media and talks about the individual and talks about the individual. Of course, everyone, I knew, I knew something was wrong with this guy. Everyone runs to that. And everyone begins, and then they use his fall to criticize his theology or, you know, criticize different things he has done. And it's just like the man sinned. King David sinned, who was a man after God's own heart. He sin. Are you going to criticize? You know, well, he 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 wasn't very spiritual. You know, his theology was wrong. You know, you know, the, the apostle Paul says the things he wants to do, he doesn't do. The things he doesn't want to do, he does. And speaks of him being the chief of sinners. So obviously, Paul felt he was sinning and committing sin. So are you going to question his theology? I mean, it's just sometimes people look for any reason to attack someone. So if there are victims. That's, that's first. Second, then the, the individual, we want obviously him to be held accountable. And, and listen, we want uh, him to be restored. And then obviously, obviously, um, it hurts the name of Christ. Just, just some initial thoughts. But here's what bothered me. And a number of websites where Christians were commenting, I kept seeing Galatians 5 show up. Galatians 5, and basically this is the way the argument goes. Well, the man committed sin because he was, and I quote, he was not walking in the Spirit. Galatians, and then they would quote uh, Galatians 5, 6. Then I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And basically the argument was, if he was truly walking in the Spirit, he wouldn't have been committed in any, he wouldn't have committed any of these sins. Now we'll slow down. Are you telling me that a Christian can walk in the Spirit and never sin ever again? As long as they walk... So what you're telling me is that all Christians have the ability to be sinless. Or are you saying that if you walk in the Spirit, you won't commit the kind of sins he committed? You won't end up in a public scandal for sexual misconduct? or possibly sexual harassment, or sexting, or all the other, other things that he did. It sounds like, according to some of the articles, drunkenness was involved as well, okay? So if he's got an alcohol issue, a sexual issue, whatever is it, are you saying that if you walk in the Spirit, you won't have, you won't have any of those issues? But what, what about all the other sins? Or what, or, what, or what you're saying is, if you walk in the Spirit, you won't commit a mortal sin? You'll just commit lots of venial sins. And I, sometimes I just, I just, and, and if you look at some of the attitudes some people were having in, the, in, in their comments, they were acting like they, that they've never committed a sin. They never commit sin. They don't have any problem with sin. And you're like, so, so aren't you delusional? So here's what I want to do with this very brief live broadcast. Galatians 5.16. Now, I will be honest with you. If you read the verse, it seems to clearly imply that if I could walk in the Spirit, I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And it goes and lists all the things uh, about, the, about you know, the works of the flesh. You know, I've got sexual sin. I've got idolatry. I've got strife, seditions, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness. I mean, I've got a whole th a lot of things listed. Are they, are they, is that a comprehensive list? Is that everything that, uh, that is, you know, a, a part of the, the flesh? Or is the, the works of the flesh anything that is sinful? All right? So here's what I would like to say. All right? Or here's what I want to do. I want to pose this question to everyone, especially members of Victory Baptist Church. Well, maybe we can work on this next Wednesday night. This Wednesday, we worked on a theology, a theology of conscience. Maybe next, theology, uh, next Wednesday, we can work on a theology of what it means to walk in the Spirit. What does it actually mean to walk in the Spirit? And if you do... If you do, can you 
completely avoid sin. And if you say, no, you can't be perfect, then what does it mean to walk in the Spirit? If I walk in the Spirit, I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What is it? I mean, I want a tangible definition of what it is, all right? So because we have to know what it is to know how to do it. And if I do it, am I guaranteed to never sin? Never fulfill the lust of the flesh again. Now, or now what you could say, well, as you, you could never fulfill the lust of flesh, but no one will walk in the spirit all the time. All right, well then, if no one will walk in the spirit all the time, then why even attack this man? Well, if he was walking in the spirit, he wouldn't have done this. Well, if you, you wouldn't have sinned today if you were walking in the spirit, because I guarantee every person who was pointing out his sin, they, have, they sin today as well, unless our entire understanding of sin needs to be redefined. When someone is caught in a public scandal, especially involving sex, <laughs> it's over. I, I just, and it, here's, the, I don't know this Christian comedian. I don't even know anything about his Christian profession. I don't know anything about his theology. I don't know. Here's what I know. It's a human being. His life is falling apart. Pray for him. Pray for, for restoration. We want him to be restored to a right place, a useful place. Not just destroyed, but restored. And hopefully, any woman who was hurt by this man, hopefully they can receive help. Hopefully they can be restored back to a place where, where they won't have any lasting scars emotionally, spiritually. In their lives, they can move forward. You want, you want a, a healing, a forgiveness, a, a peace to come on everyone's life involved. But I just think sometimes Christians are like, oh, that person said, well, they weren't walking in the spirit. If they walk in the spirit, they wouldn't do this kind of stuff. Okay, or, or, wait, wait a minute. So you're, you just made an argument that we would never sin if we could do that. Is, that. is that what that means? So what does it mean to walk in the spirit? How does one do it? And can you literally be sinless if you could walk in the spirit? And we need a, we need a clearly define what that means. All right. We'll stop right there. I just want to throw this out there. There's a, I have, I have a lot of thoughts, but I only had a few minutes to, to hit the go live button and this was my opportunity to do so. So I did so. And well, there you have it. It's not perfect. Please understand. I wasn't able to cover everything and hopefully I did not say anything in an incorrect. Someone will be, you know, going through every word I say and go, wait a minute, you didn't say this right. You didn't say this right. Wait, you, when you were going about which things are important, you should have started with the, the women. Well, I didn't, I, at first I didn't, I, you know, didn't catch my, I didn't hit my mind immediately that he was also accused of harassment. The headline just talks about misconduct. So I was going it from that perspective, but I corrected it. So, you know, please understand quick live broadcast. Just bringing this to everyone's attention to get us to start thinking about this. And the main thing is I want to think about what does it mean to walk in the Spirit? And do we need to be more careful in the way we throw that out there? All right. There you have it. You can email me at newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. Let me know what you think about this entire situation and about Galatians 5.16. All right, everyone, everyone have a great evening. God bless.